I can remember another occasion in which a colleague in the ministry phoned and he said, I've had a guy with me all afternoon, but uh, somehow I'm not getting through to him. Can I send him down to you? We stayed about two blocks away from one another. So eventually it was a knock on the door and I went to open it. It was a guy of about 40. Uh, reasonably nice looking chap and I invited him, took him into the study and I said, how can I help you? He said, Pastor, I've got a problem. My wife has left me because of the problem and she's got the kids. I said, well, what's the problem? He said, I can't stay away from anything in a skirt. He said, yeah, that is a big problem. And I sat and chatted to him and I, when I was finished and he was ready to, to go, I said, now, just before you go, I, I want you to do some things for me. And I gave him a list of four things that I suggested that he would do before I would see him again. And uh, lo and behold, the next evening, just at supper time, there was a knock at the door. And uh, it was the same guy. When I opened the door, I said, Hello, did you do what I asked you to do? He said, no, Pastor. I said, well, go home and do it, and don't you dare come back until you've done what I told you to do. And I closed the door, and I went back to enjoy my supper. And the following night, about seven, knock on the door, and he has the same guy. He said, oh, Pastor, please, you've got to help me. I can't help myself. I said, okay. We were walking up to the church, which was about, again, two, three blocks away. And uh, I had the keys and I opened the dark building. I put one light on and I took a chair and I put it right in front of the pulpit. I said, now, if you mean business with God. Are you sure you mean business with God? I said, Pastor, I can't carry on living like this. It's destroying me. There are just too many women around. I said, fine, then uh, tonight you're going to sort your problem out with God. And I put that chair in front of the pulpit, as I said. I said, now you kneel there. And you don't get up off your knees until you've made right with God. And I said, I'm not going to be here listening to your terrible stories. I said, I don't want to hear those things. And so I left the one light on in the building. And I went out and I locked the door so he couldn't escape. And I walked around the block repeatedly just praying in tongues and praying into this specific situation. And after about an hour and a quarter, I went back. My friends, when I got there, that chair was soaking wet. He cried his way to the cross. And Jesus had met his need and had set him free. Do you know, although his wife owned a boutique, a clothing boutique in Johannesburg, within a month, She'd sold the house, she'd sold the boutique, and she'd arranged for the children to be transferred down to the coast. And they were able to reunite as a family. And as far as I know today, they're still going on with the Lord. My friends, there is not a situation in life that God cannot change, providing you are willing to align to change the situation and to change you. Now, isn't it strange? We had an old couple in the church. And one afternoon, uh, this old chap came knocking at my door and he said, uh, Pastor, uh, can you help me? I said, yeah, sure. What can I help you with? He said, won't you go and sort my mom and dad out? They're fighting like cat and dog. And I looked at this guy and I thought, your mom and dad? You're an old man. How old are they? He said, well, they're well into their 80s. And so I got my wife and we got into the car and we went and we knocked on the door. And these folks, well into their 80s, had been married for 66 years. And yet they were fighting like cat and dog. But thank God that evening my wife and I lovingly led them both to the Lord. And Granny only had one more year to live. 
But what a wonderful, wonderful year they spent together. Before Granny was called home in victory, they'd lived a life they should have been living for 66 years. Not many folks are married for 66 years, but their 67th year was the happiest of them all because they'd shared it with Jesus. We'd encourage you to do the same. But you know, that same gentleman came knocking at my door again one afternoon. He said, Pastor, these are not folks from the church, but, oh man, won't you please go and help them? They're sick. And so he gave us the address, and my wife and I got into the car when he left, went down into town and found the address, walked up the path, stood in the veranda, knocked on the door. Nothing happened. They're both sick, I understood. They must surely be home. But no movement, nobody came to the door. And so we left, after about 20 minutes, standing on the veranda. Do you know what? We went back the next afternoon. And I knocked on the door and nothing happened. But then out of the corner of my eye, I saw a finger in a window doing this. So I said to my wife, come honey, they're inviting us in. So we opened the front door. I said, hello, We've come to visit. We heard voices. We followed the sound until we got to the bedroom. And there was the wife lying in bed. She was down with a full dose of the flu. But in the corner of this rather large room, sitting in a nicely upholstered chair, was a man in a tacky pair of pajamas. And so after introducing ourselves, I said to him, I uh, understood you also sick. He said, yes, Pastor. I've been sitting in this chair for almost two years now. My wife baths me in the chair. She dresses me. She feeds me. But I can't move. I've got ankylosing spondylitis. And having spent five years at medical school, I had heard that term before. It's a dreadful disease that destroys the spine. And then my wife and I prayed with the lady that God would touch her and raise her up so that she could minister to her husband as well. And I said to him, if you had one desire this evening, what would you ask for? You know what he said? Oh, I'd love to sleep behind my wife back in the double bed. And I said to the wife, uh, where can I find a clean pair of pajamas? She said, Pastor, that second wardrobe over there, that's his. Down in the third drawer, that's where I keep his pajamas. And I took out a lovely pair of pajamas. And I went to him and he thought I was going to dress him and help him to bed. I said, no, no, no I'm not going to do that. See, God had told me what to do. And I took those pajamas and I put them on the end of the bed which was a good four or five meters from where he was sitting in the chair or just existing in the chair as it were. And I said to him, Johan, do you want God to do something for you? He said, oh please pastor, I'm so tired of this way of life. I said, then you're going to have to get out of this chair this, this evening and walk to the bed and put your pajamas on yourself. And then you can get behind your wife's back and you can snuggle up and sleep together. And you know, I went back with my wife the following afternoon. Knocked on the door, saw no finger moving, no finger from a window in the bedroom. But then I heard footsteps and the door opened. There was Johan, fully dressed smiling from year to year. He said, Ach, Pastor, come binnen, come inside. I've got something wonderful to tell you. And so we went into the room, sat on the bed. His wife was getting over the flu. I said, what happened? He said, Pastor, I got out of this chair with my bent back and all, and I managed to hobble to the bed. I sat on it, I nearly fell off, but I sat on it and I put my own pajamas on just like you told me to. Then I climbed into bed and I slept the best night of, in many years, cuddled up with my wife. And during the night, God healed me because when I woke up in the morning, 
I got out of bed forgetting about my back and my condition. And God's healed me completely. And so I'm dressed and I was ready waiting for you to open the door and to invite you in. My friends, we serve a wonderful God. He said in his word, I am the Lord thy God that healeth thee. So if you need a touch in your body from God and a change in your situation, trust Him. Ask Him. Nothing is too great. Nothing is too much. And nothing is impossible with our God because He is the Saviour, our Healer and our Friend. Whatever your need might be, won't you invite him into your life?